So what we see uh, in terms of demand is really, as you say, a sharp slowdown in growth uh, from last year and the year before. Um, but we have to bear in mind that the, the strong growth that we have seen in recent year comes as after the pandemic, the opening up uh, of the economies and the lower restrictions. So really the growth that we saw in 2023 and 2022 was unusual in, in historic terms. So the return to about uh, less than a million barrels a day of demand growth this year, it's more in line with historic trends and the GDP of about 3% that we expect this year. Um, and lastly, what we are seeing is that um, new technologies uh, such as surging EV sales is really taking uh, a dip into oil demand growth in particular in China. Toril, expand on that for me because the bulk of the downgrade for both the IEA and OPEC is off the back of some concerns around the Chinese oil demand growth outlook. What are you seeing right now? Well, there's a few things that we see in China at the moment. Obviously, the economy is struggling uh, after the very, the very strong growth that we saw in the post-pandemic rebound. Uh, the property market has been very weak. Uh, we're seeing the government putting stimulus um, uh, measures in place, uh, but they have yet to take effect. But importantly, what we're seeing is that uh, one out of two cars in, sold in, in China now is in e electric vehicles. We're seeing domestic aviation being displaced by high-speed trail trains uh, and this in, and trucks fueled by natural gas instead of diesel and this is having a real impact on all demand growth in the country uh, and lastly we're seeing um, we're seeing population uh, growth come to a halt and actually a Chinese population is declining year on year so this is what's feeding into the slower growth in the Chinese oil demand uh, going forward Demand now is, is mostly driven by uh, the petrochemical sector rather than the transport fuels. Right, and Toral, this is of course front and center for global energy market investors and anyone following the global markets right now. It seems as if what OPEC and the IEA can agree on is that Chinese demand is cooling, but what you cannot agree on is when we're going to see peak demand. And I want to expand on this. The IEA saying global oil demand may peak by 2030. OPEC says demand will grow until at least 2045. Actually, OPEC officials say your projections are, quote, dangerous for the industry. So can you respond to that? And on a broader question here, how can stakeholders trust these projections when they are so different? So we update our numbers uh, on a monthly basis, as you know, uh, in terms of uh, Chinese oil demand growth. We've seen now for the past five months, Chinese oil demand declining year on year. In August, the latest uh, month for which we have actual data from the Chinese uh, official uh, sources, Chinese oil demand fell by half a million barrels a day year on year. If we look outside of China um, and as, um, into OECD, for instance, in the OECD, oil demand currently is less than uh, it's, it's more than 2 million barrels a day lower than it was in 2019 before the pandemic. So we're seeing these structural changes really impacting oil demand growth in China, in the OECD uh, and, and other mature markets. Of course, we see, continue to see growth in emerging and developing economies. Uh, but over the past decade, China accounted for more than 60 percent of global oil demand growth. Uh, and with China now as the engine, the key engine of oil demand growth slowing and its economy changing gear, uh, we're looking at which countries are taking up. So, of course, we're seeing continued growth in India, Brazil, other Southeast Asian economies. But this is uh, not at the level uh, that we've seen from, from China and other countries. And what underpins our forecast of slowing oil demand growth towards the end of this decade, where a peak or a plateau uh, reached towards 2030.